Good morning, good morning, good morning. We welcome you to Kansas City Community Church, whether you are driving in your car, whether you're sitting at home, whether you're sitting down with a cup of coffee, we wanna welcome you this morning to Kansas City Community Church. On behalf of our pastor, Charles Cofield Sr. and First Lady Joy Cofield, we welcome you this morning. We know that God has a great word for you on today. God has something in store just for you. He stopped by today to tell you that he loves you and he appreciate you. So this morning as I come before you, um, before I get into the scripture, I wanna um, just uh, welcome everybody this morning. Just welcome everybody this morning. And just to say thank you for joining us online, whether you're at home or whether you're riding in your car. And I'm gonna uh, come before you this morning with two announcements. We have Wednesday night Bible study online. You can go to Kansas City Community Church and join us. There's a website there that you can join and you will have our Wednesday night Bible study. So you won't be missing anything. Also, we remind you about our giving online. You can go at Kansas City, uh, kccommunitychurch.org. You, or you can drop it off in an offering box. It's a secure box, so you can feel safe about dropping it off. So like I said, that again, the line is kccommunitychurch.org. Or you can drop it off at the church in a secure box. And we thank you for your giving. We know that God is moving in a mighty way and his people are being blessed even by just giving. You may not be able to walk by through the doors, but you can still give and still be a blessing. So I, as I close with the announcements, I wanna come to you with the word of God. And I love how God speaks to us. Uh, this morning, in my, even in my sleep, the scripture came to me. And then again, as I got up and made, go about my day, I thought about the word of God. And then he showed it to me again. And it was in Psalms 34 and 8. And I just want to read this, these few scriptures. And it said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. <laughs> Hallelujah. He, he said, blessed is the man that trusts in him. He said, oh, fear the Lord, ye, ye his saints. Praise God. For there is no want to them that fear him. Praise God. I'm going to turn it over into the hands of my husband this moment for a word of prayer. Praise the Lord. And I just want to add to that a scripture also is, and because it coincides with what my wife was saying here in the Hebrew 4 and 12. Hallelujah. It said that the word of God, and she was speaking about the word, how the word of God is quick and powerful. And he said that it is sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of sunder of soul and spirit. God, I tell you, I just feel like preaching on this morning, but, but it's not up for me to preach. I feel the, the presence of God this morning. So we're going to go into the, uh, a prayer uh, to God. Father, in the name of Jesus. You told us, God, that your word, oh God, in your word, God, that you would never leave us nor forsake us. You said, God, that your word is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And I don't care what the devil do. I don't care what he say on this morning. God, we are going to continue to stay in your perfect will. We are going to look to the hills from which cometh our help. And we know, God, that our help comes from you. And we are thanking and praising you right now, God. But we can't help but to praise you because we know God that you are worthy to be praised well, oh yes God we look to the hills from which cometh our help and we know God that our help comes from you our prayer on this morning God that you will come in the midst of this service and that you will move by your power and that you will continue Father God to strengthen each and every one of your servants on today and we pray God according to those that are in the hospital oh God and you will watch over them God and protect them from the works of the enemy and 
thank God that you will allow them, God, to get up out of that bed right there, oh God, all over the place, oh God, that, that you will touch them, God, that you will cause them to begin to walk, oh God, and to talk, oh God, and, and do the things, God, that you are able them to do. God, we thank and praise your Father, God, for your word on today, God. It is a healing, God, to us, God. It's strength to us, God. It's comfort to us, God. It's power to us, God. And we feel your presence now, God. We feel your word moving on the inside of us, God. You're speaking to every one of us, God. You let us know, God, even through all the stuff that is going on right now, God, that your word, oh God, is quick and is powerful. And God, that you are standing in the middle of what is going on right now. So the devil is defeated. There's nothing that he can do, God, to stop the progress of God. And Lord, we are thanking and praising you, Father God, for those, Father God, that are reaching out to you, Lord. Let us know, God, that they are strengthened, oh God, that they are being healed even as we speak. And we love you for it, God, and we praise you, Father God. We pray for our pastor today, God. We pray for the speaker on today. Lord, that you will speak through him, oh God, and that you will send a word, oh God, to your people. Yes, that you will encourage them, God, to let them know, God, that they don't have to worry. Oh, that they are all right with you, God. That they are in good hands this morning. Hey, and we thank you, Lord, and we praise you. And God, we will give you all the praise. That we will continue to bless you. We will continue, Father God, to lift you up in the name of Jesus. And right now, we give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. And this is done in Jesus' name, we pray and we thank you. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. God, we thank you. Hallelujah. We praise you, God, because you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be glorified. Oh, we lift our voice to you, our hands to you on today. In Jesus' name. Ah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes. Now we turn it into the hands, this service, into the hands of the music department. Hallelujah. Well, it's praise and worship time. And right where you are, we can praise God together because he's worthy of all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Do you know that wherever you are and whatever circumstances you are, if you praise him, he will begin to work right where you are. We thank God for it. Hallelujah. Just want to praise you forever and ever and ever for all you've done for me. Blessings and glory and I us for blessing me just want to praise you forever and ever and ever for all you've done for me blessings and glory praise you forever and ever and ever for all you've done you've done for me blessings and glory and I know they all belong to you thank you Jesus 
Jesus for blessing me. Hey, oh, just want to praise you forever, ever and ever, and ever for all you've done, you've done for me. Blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. Blessings and glory and honor, it all belongs to you. Blessings and glory and honor, it all belongs to you. Thank you, Jesus. Just wanna praise you forever and ever. Thank you, God, and ever for all you've done, you've done for me. Blessings and glory and I. Thank you, Jesus. 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 For blessing me. Give him glory. Give him honor. And give him praise because he's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. 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 He's worthy of our glory and our honor and our praise. That's why we want to give him more of us. The more he deserves so much more than anything that we can give. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to give my best to you. I want to do what you ask me to. I want to go wherever you say. Say the word and I'll obey. I want to live a life that's real. I want to serve you, Lord, for real. For you deserve all this and more. So I give you more, more. I give you more, more. I want to give my best to you. I want to do what you ask me to. I want to go wherever you say. Say the word and I'll obey. I want to live a life that's real. I want to serve you, Lord, for real. For you deserve all this and more. So I give you more, more. I give you more, more. You deserve.
give you more, I give you more, I give you more. You deserve enough more. You deserve enough more, God. You deserve enough more. You deserve enough more. As the deer pet it for the wild. God, let's give God some praise, amen, wherever you may be, amen, whether you're in your living room on this morning, amen, we have a few uh, that are in the house of the Lord, and, and truly God is deserving of all our praise and all of our worship, amen, it, it, the more that he gives to us, amen, the song says uh, we need to be extending more, we need to give God more of our, our time, more of our, our love, more of our worship, and so on today, as we stand in the house of the Lord, we just de declare and we bless the name of the Lord. The Lord, here I am. Send me, Lord. Give me more so I can give you more. And so today we say thank God for uh, this service thus far. Amen. We thank God for our music uh, department. Amen. We thank God for those that are sharing uh, in their gifts. Amen. Blessing uh, the house on this morning. We thank God for our our media department, amen. We thank God for their hands, amen, their eyes, amen, their attention to detail, their alertness, and we just continue to pray God's a blessing on their lives as they continue to serve, amen. They continuing to serve, and so uh, we say thank you, amen. Before I get into uh, what God has given me on this morning, just wanted to uh, voice out uh, just, um, just some of our members that we want to uh, make sure that we keep uh, uh, praying for that God will, uh, for one, heal them and that God will strengthen them. Uh, many of you may not know, but Mother Grayson, amen, she lost her younger brother on this week, amen, and we want to continue uh, to pray for her. She is one of uh, the oldest members in this church, amen, and I don't care uh, how old you may be when you lose a loved one, it is difficult, and so we want to keep her and her family in prayer. Uh, we want to continue to pray for Sister Pitts, amen. Uh, she is uh, recovering, and God is uh, blessing her with uh, his healing touch, and also uh, Sister Brenda Epps and Sister Candice, amen. Uh, we just, Harvey, we just got uh, uh, just word on this morning, amen, that she is uh, in the hospital. And so, you know, saints, we should always pray, amen. You never know when you are going to be uh, in a situation in your life, uh, that you can't even pray for yourself, amen, and it's good to know that you have uh, brothers and sisters in Christ uh, that will and that can get a prayer through, and so on today we're just believing uh, those uh, persons that have heard these requests uh, that you will extend yourself uh, and your time in prayer, and we believe that God will be glorified. I am going to get into the word on this morning. I'm going to give you what uh, God has uh, given me, and uh, we're going to share, amen, and we pray that you are blessed, amen. If you have uh, your Bibles, those that are in the house, amen, those uh, that are watching via live stream, 
Amen. We will be posting these uh, particular scriptures uh, for, you, for you to view. Amen. If you have your, your iPads and your Bibles at home, we just ask that you govern yourself accordingly. Uh, the Word of God uh, passage of scripture is be, be coming from 1 Corinthians. Amen. On this morning, uh, the second chapter. Amen. And we will be reading uh, 10 verses on this morning. Everybody say 10. Amen. I'm going to do a little, I'm going to do a little reading on this morning. Amen. It's going to take me where I need to go. And so we must share uh, in these 10 verses. Uh, but 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, uh, verses 1 through 10. Amen. The word of God reads as follows. And so it was with me, brothers and sisters, when I came to you, I did not come with eloquence or human wisdom. This is, this is Paul uh, speaking and writing. And I said, I didn't come with eloquence or human wisdom as I proclaimed to you uh, the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. He said, I came to you in weakness with great fear and trembling. Uh, my message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. Verses 6, it says, We do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. No, we declare God's wisdom a, a mystery that has been hidden and that God disdained for our glory before time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it for they had they were, would not have crucified, for they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. Verse 9, however, as it is written, what no eyes have seen and what no ears have heard and what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love him, these are the things God has revealed to us by his spirit. May God add a blessing to the reading and hearing and doers of his word. On today, amen, I, I, I am wanting to uh, uh, share uh, for this uh, first quarter, amen, our Sunday school uh, material and our Sunday school lessons have been uh, centered around wisdom. Uh, lessons like listen to God's wisdom, uh, value wisdom, and receive uh, wisdom's a gift, and so on today I want to uh, I want to talk a little bit about wisdom. Uh, we know, especially in the times that we are living in, uh, you need to have some wisdom, uh, because without wisdom, uh, you may uh, face some unwarranted consequences. Uh, many people have uh, blemished their lives because of bad decisions uh, made apart from uh, God's will and uh, because of lack of wisdom. Uh, situations like leaving your, uh, your job, quitting your job without securing uh, gainful employment. Amen. We've had some bad decisions and used bad wisdom about uh, some of our, our friends, amen, that we uh, were able to choose. Uh, relationships. Amen. I, I don't want to come out and say that you married the wrong person. All I'm going to say is, is that you should have prayed a little bit harder. Come on, somebody. Amen. And, and you find yourself, amen, revisiting uh, the, the marital altar uh, again because of wisdom of wisdom. I, I'm, I feel like preaching, amen. I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to have to move forward. Uh, There's a lot of people that have relocated uh, to the right place at the wrong time. Amen. You know, uh, even now I'm looking at uh, uh, different states, amen, i.e. Texas and, and California. And I always hear uh, people, amen, especially in Kansas City, amen. You know, Kansas City is a good place, but compared to some of the big cities like Atlanta and, and, and Texas, you know, it's a little bit different. And, and I always hear people uh, from Kansas say, I'm moving to Texas and, or I'm moving to, to this place. I'm going to Florida. But, but right now with all that's going on, on, amen. You, you might need to use a little wisdom, amen, because there are 
or a lot of different things going on in those areas. Clearly, despite uh, what you have may heard, uh, young people are not the only ones uh, that are making unwise decisions. Uh, simply because maturity and, and growth is not associated uh, uh, with age, there are many older people. Amen. I, I know if I can just get one amen on this morning. Amen. If you're at home, you can type amen. I, I, know, I, I know there's many older individuals uh, that have a lot of knowledge. Amen. But, but they have no existing application of wisdom. Yes, yes, facts and, and knowledge and information and, and, and mastery and skills uh, that you uh, acquire through experience and through education is to be commended. But, but knowledge can only take you so far. You see, knowledge will show you how to, how to earn some money. Amen. Uh, but, but wisdom will, will, will help you not only pay your monthly bills, but at the end of the month, it will allow you to have a little something left over for a rainy day. Yes, yes, knowledge along with maybe some good looks, amen, a pretty smile, uh, maybe uh, your, your, your glam squad has got you looking nice and, and you have those flattering words. It might help you obtain a, a husband. It might help you obtain a wife, but wisdom will keep you out of divorce court. I, I, I wish I could, amen, I, I'm, just, I'm just setting the stage on this morning. Proverbs 4 and 7 says, wisdom is the principal thing. It says, therefore, get wisdom, and with all that, you need to get a understanding. Natural wisdom defined on this morning, amen, is understanding what is true, amen, what is right, and, and the ability to not know what is true, and, and to not only know what is right, but also to put it in practice. But when we refer to spiritual uh, wisdom, uh, it's a little bit different. Spiritual wisdom gives us insight. Spiritual wisdom gives us a discernment and it gives us the, the, the understanding and the ability to respond to life's uh, difficulties from not a Charles point of view, not, uh, not a John's point of view, but, but from a God's point of view. And so here we have uh, the Apostle Paul, amen, writing his first uh, letter to the church in Corinth, amen, and, and we know that Paul is a, uh, a missionary giant, amen, the Greek-speaking Jew. Paul was very educated. Uh, Paul was even skillful in his trade. Paul was a, a, a tent maker, uh, Paul, the man that was was gifted, amen, and, and who wrote, uh, 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 you know, most of the New Testament and, and was was noted and, and was called uh, and labeled as one of the, the greatest apostles, even uh, to this very day, amen. Uh, uh, we are inspired uh, by the writings and the words of, of, of Paul, you know, just 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 uh, 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 phrases like let not us become weary in, in, in well-doing, amen, because in due season, amen, I know that you're experiencing COVID right now in this pandemic and things that are, that are happening, but Paul says do not get weary in, in well-doing because even in the midst of this pandemic, due season is going to come. He says if you, if you, if you hold on and, and don't faint, Paul talks about uh, 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 letting us know that we need to walk by faith and, and not by, by sight. And, and he even talks to the preachers uh, of how we are to preach in season as well as, as out of season. Paul tells us, do not be conformed to this world, but, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Paul tells us to press. Mm, mm, mm towards the mark, towards the, the prize of the high calling, which is in Jesus Christ. And I can go on and, and I can go on, but, but one of the most contributions uh, uh, to Christian uh, theology that, that Paul lays out, we find it in Romans 5 and 1, where it talks about one being justified by faith and being saved, amen, 
from sins by simply believing in Jesus. But what I want you to notice on this morning is that with all Paul's commendations and and with all of his spiritual uh, gifts and with all of his ability, amen, you have to go, amen, a little bit further in 1 Corinthians. We look at the 13th chapter uh, and the first and second verse. Paul says that if I don't have love for the people, he simply says "I'm, I'm nothing. Paul wasn't trying to take any credit. You know, sometimes when people get positions, amen, sometimes when they get <laughs> titles, amen, uh, they, they forget their road on Damascus, amen. They, they forget where they come from. They, they forget to what God had to do in their life, how God had to get their attention. And so, and I'm not saying all the times, but sometimes when, when people, amen, begin to get accolades, they forget about where God has brought them from. And in Instead of them walking in humility, amen, they will puff up, amen, they'll turn their heads, they'll talk about people that are trying to get to where they're getting to. But you notice with Paul, Paul says that I am nothing. I'm nothing. 1 Corinthians 3 and 18, amen, says don't deceive yourself. If any of you think that you are wise by the standards of This age, you should become fools so that you may become wise. And when you think that you got it all together, that's when you need to check yourself. When you you think that you have arrived, you need to to check yourself. You need to tap yourself on your shoulder, amen, and remember where God has brought you from. But why I love Paul is this. As we look at the first five verses, I love Paul's humility. Amen. And if you look in Proverbs 11th uh, a chapter, the second verse, you'll find that humility and wisdom, it goes together. So Paul begins to, to share with the church from uh, Corinthians and the believers uh, when he first uh, began to preach and, and, and when he arrived on his preaching assignment. Paul tells them that I, I didn't come trying to impress you with polished vocabulary. I didn't come here trying to impress you with uh, my vast knowledge of the scriptures. Paul said, I didn't come to be an entertainer, amen. I didn't didn't walk into the church at Corinth and say lights, camera, and action. Paul is is here, amen. I'm the man and I got it all together. Y'all heard about my reputation precedes me. Paul said, I didn't come, amen, uh, uh, wanting everybody to celebrate me. Because, see, Paul already knew and recognized that 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 type of preaching, amen, that that type of presentation is full of appeasement, but it does not transfer any spiritual substance. Come on, help me out, preacher, on this morning. In other words, instead of you uh, going to the well, amen, going to the church, amen, going to a prayer meeting, amen, they said the well that never runs dry, expecting your cup to overflow, you leave with your cup cup full of emptiness and and words and confusion. In fact, matter of fact, Paul, uh, when we get to verse 3, he he said, "I, I, I came and I was scared. I don't know what they were doing (laughs) in Corinth. I don't know what type of crowd Paul had to to preach in front of. It must have been rough, amen, because Paul, you know, they had tried to kill him, and praise the Lord, they they had uh, uh, persecuted him, and here he is sharing the word of God, and Paul said, I'm trembling, and I'm I'm in fear, amen. Pastors now, we we don't know. I'm talking to the pastors. We don't have to worry so much about that uh, around. Right now, amen, you know, we're preaching to uh, some of our empty sanctuaries. We're preaching to the lights. We're preaching to the the flowers. I know that there's people out there that are viewing us, amen, but what we see with our visual eyes, amen, it's not a lot of people uh, sitting in in front of us, and so we don't have to worry about a rough crowd, amen. We don't have to worry about those that when you begin to preach and they don't understand what you're saying or they don't agree with what you're saying, they put up that gospel finger amen and they walk out of the church or they go to the restroom amen and and they pretend like they got to go to the restroom but they exit the building Mm. 
Hallelujah. It was a rough crowd. But see, Paul had already made up in his mind. He made up his mind ahead of time that he was wanting to tell them what he knew about Christ and the crucifixion. Verse 2, it says, For I, I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. What was Paul trying to convey? Paul was reassuring them that he didn't want anybody to come to the faith in Christ because of the way he gift wrapped the message. <laughs> amen. He, you, you know, sometimes, you know, amen, I, 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 you know, sometimes people will package uh, things in such a way, amen, that you want it until you get it. Come on, somebody. Woo wee. Amen. I, I'm just it just coming to me. It ain't an ad. They come on TV about some food. Amen. They're advertising a burger, some ribs that don't and on some chicken. Amen. And on the commercial, it looks good on the billboards. It looks good. But when you get to the restaurant, amen, and the plate comes before you, you say, wait a minute. It don't look like what it look on the menu. So he said, I, I don't want you to, to be confused. I, if you're giving your life uh, to Christ, he says, he says that I want the decision to be based on the faith to, that, that of God's power. I want it to not be based on human wisdom. If you're giving your, your heart to Christ, I don't want it to have nothing to do with me. Don't look at Paul, but look to Christ. Mm, mm, mm. And so as we arrive, amen, to verses 6 through 10, Paul simply begins to instruct them about wisdom. First and foremost, I need you to understand on this morning that Paul is not insisting uh, that human wisdom is a, is a bad thing. But more importantly, Paul wanted them and us to be able to distinguish that there is an enormous difference between human wisdom and the hidden wisdom of God. There, there's a difference. There, there's a difference between uh, a natural wisdom and, and spiritual wisdom, amen. I can remember the preachers of old, amen. Some of them only had a third grade education, amen. They could not read, amen, but they had spiritual wisdom because they allowed the anointing of the Holy Spirit to rest on their lives. And, and we, we have now, we have commentaries and we can go to websites and we can do different things, amen, to enhance our learning. But that doesn't mean that we're wise. As a believer, amen, on this morning, if you desire to live in an, in an, in an agreeable a lifestyle with God, uh, you have to understand that your human intellect, amen, your philosophies will not be sufficient for you in the spiritual realm to get where God wants you to go. You got to go deeper. Why? It's simply because, amen, and I, and I, I amen, I, I'm glad that you're concerned and you, I'm glad that some of you are asking, why, why, pastor, why, is, why, why can't I just settle with this human wisdom? I've made some good choices and, and, and uh, I've listened to some good people. This is why uh, uh, that you cannot just, just park and, 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 and just be content with human wisdom. The reason why is that human wisdom is based on what you can observe and what you can accomplish without spiritual reasoning. Hmm. Yeah, it's what you can do without seeking God. It's what you can come up with without going into prayer. And, 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 and when, when there is no spiritual reasoning, what that means is that, that we have allowed our desires and our motivation to influence our perception. And when you do that, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, uh, 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 you can end up looking for wisdom in the wrong place. And I'm about to make a, a bold statement, amen, and whether you agree with it or not, I'm going to give you some backing, amen. And when you begin to look for wisdom in the wrong place, looking for wisdom in the wrong place, here's a statement, it can lead to sin. 
Ah, I know, I, I know y'all say, wait a minute. Yo, I'm looking for wisdom in the wrong place. And now you're telling me it can lead to sin. Amen. Let me, let me take you back all the way to Genesis. Amen. Amen. Now, I mean, if you've ever decided to read the Bible and you haven't finished, usually you just, you at least made it through the first chapter. Amen. So, so this should be familiar to everybody. All you have to do is look at the third chapter in Genesis around the sixth verse. Amen. And the word of God says, is that, that, that Eve was convinced by the serpent in the garden that the tree of knowledge of good and evil was beautiful and she needed the wisdom it would give her. Bible says so she took the fruit and she ate it and, 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 and I ain't putting it all on Eve, amen, because Adam was no wiser. He ate the fruit too, amen, praise the Lord. And verse 7 says, and when their eyes was open, they realized that they were exposed, they were, were naked. Why? Because they were looking for wisdom in the wrong place. Yeah, Eden, I know that it's a, uh, it was a physical place, and the word Eden means paradise, and, amen. The word Eden means a place of, of fellowship uh, uh, with God, but I want to let somebody know just in case. I know that was a long time ago. It was in the book of Genesis, but I want to let somebody know on this morning that there is still a serpent in the garden. First mm. Peter 5 and 8 says, be alert and, and, and of sober mind, your enemy. Ah, the devil prowls around like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. He's still enticing people. He's still tempting people to make unwise uh, decisions. Uh, you know, every chance the enemy gets, amen, he's wanting to attack your mind with fear. And, amen, he wants to attack your mind with, with doubt. Amen. Oh, Jesus, I'm going to get COVID. Oh, Lord, I'm, I, 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 I don't know who got it. And, Lord, I'm just so scared to walk out, out of the house. And, and Lord, I, I, I'm scared to cut my grass. I'm scared to go for a walk. Put a mask on on this morning. Amen. Declare, amen, that God has not given me a, a spirit of fear. And, and, and do what you're supposed to do. Protect yourself. But don't allow the enemy to come in and torment your mind. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, anoint your mask, praise God, in the name of Jesus. I'm surprised a teller, uh, uh, evangelist, you know, they, they come on TV, amen, they selling holy water, and they, uh, they did tore up prayer cloths, and they pray. I'm surprised ain't nobody got a market out there now for selling masks that they didn't anoint it. Come on, somebody. And hey, don't steal my ID in Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> But sometimes we need to clap back. We need to give the devil a, a clap back. And we need to remind the devil, amen, that, that he was defeated on Calvary. We need to remind the devil, amen, that he cannot steal our joy. Why? Because this joy that God gave to us, can't nobody take it away from me, from you. Mm -mm -mm. During these times, you can't lean <laughs> or lend your ear to just anybody. I, I want to let somebody know I I'm just teaching on this morning. There are people out there that uh, right now that have a demonic agenda. Amen. You know, false prophets, amen, who are distorting the word of God and who are uh, uh, attempting, amen, to blindly gain your, your trust with, with false teachings uh, that will leave you confused and, and, and leave you not even knowing what you believe. You better not ask everybody their opinion. And, and this is not the time, amen, for you to be running around listening to this and listening to everybody on the internet just because they got a church, amen, just because they say that they are preacher, amen. You better do some research and you better look at what they believe. You better make sure, hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. Glory to God. Don't even want to talk about false friends. Come on, I, I ain't got time for that on this morning. <laughs> you know, those people that, 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 in, that their intentions are to mislead you and, 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 and to betray you. This is what the word of God has to say about that in, in Colossians 2 and 8. It says, don't let anyone 
capture you with imp empty philosophies and high sounding nonsense that comes from human thinking and from spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. Ah, don't open the door for them. <laughs> don't take their pamphlets, amen. Praise the Lord. False teachings, amen, and false philosophies. That's why it's so important that we study the, uh, the Holy Scriptures. And that's why it's so important that we have the word of God in our heart. So in those times, we're able to discern if what's coming out someone's mouth is in alignment with God's word. That's why we study. Mm. So in verse six, amen, I'm almost finished. Amen. We, we read, amen, if you allow me to just reread yet when I. And among mature believers, I do speak with words of wisdom, but not the kind of wisdom that belongs to this world or to the rulers of this world who are soon forgotten. No, the wisdom we speak of is the mysteries of God. That's why a lot of people can't understand it because it's a mystery. <laughs> Woo! It says his plan that was previously hidden even though he made it for our ultimate glory before the world began it says but before the world began the rulers of this world they can't understand it because if they had it they wouldn't have crucified our lord see those without god's spirit they can't understand spiritual things this, this passage is echoed in, in 1 Corinthians, uh, the, the first chapter in, in the 18th verse, where it talks about how the word of the cross was foolishness to the wisdom of the world. Amen. They, they, they couldn't understand. They, they couldn't understand the, 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 the cross and what it meant. Amen. They, they were just, they were perplexed. Amen. But for those that needed the power of salvation, it made a whole lot of sense. With the scripture, it also reminds us that uh, there's a lot going on, amen. There's a lot going on, a lot more uh, things going on uh, around us than, than we can, can see it with our physical eyes. Verse 9 says, no eyes have seen, no ears have heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love them. These things God has revealed to us by his Spirit. See, God's wisdom gives us the capability to see things from a God perspective. I'm here to let somebody know on this morning that there's no amount of knowledge. There's no uh, amount of experience or understanding. There's no amount of common sense or insight alone will give you godly wisdom because godly wisdom is God given. Godly wisdom is spirit revealed. James 3 and 17, it, it talks about uh, how great this wisdom is. It, it says, but the wisdom from above is first of all pure. It's also peace loving. It's gentle at all times and, and willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy and the fruit of good deeds. It shows no favoritism and is always sincere. Hey Amen. If somebody right now was asking you to pay for some wisdom, you need to get your money back. Mm -mm -mm. Hey Amen. Because see, spiritual wisdom don't cost you nothing. Hey Amen. And spiritual wisdom has no agenda, amen. And spiritual wisdom is, is not given to us, amen, so we can, so we can think more highly of ourselves. But the word of God said it is pure. Woo! Mm -mm -mm. It's pure, amen. It's, it's loving. Have, you, have anybody ever told you, amen, before, amen, to share with you in words of wisdom, amen, and I'm talking about natural wisdom, but what they shared with you, amen, it was not in a loving, it was not in a loving tone, praise the Lord. Everything that they were telling you was absolutely right. Everything that they were sharing with you, amen, it was absolutely a, a blessing, and you needed to hear it. However, the way that they told you, amen, turned you off. 
had you feeling some type of way, amen, and you wanted to say, where is the love? Thank you for the information, but where is the love, amen? Yes, I've made some mistakes, and, and I went out and I purchased a car, amen, and, and I was upside down on it when I, when I purchased it, and now I'm in trouble, and, and I, I, I'm in a financial mess, and I just need uh, some guidance, and I just need some words of encouragement moving forward, what I need to do, and instead of them, amen, sitting you down and pouring into you, they begin to tell you you stupid mm, mm, mm. it don't make did you did you do you did you do you know math they could couldn't you figure this out you don't never sign nothing without reading it amen and they begin to tear into you amen and finally when they get to the point where it's a position that they can help you you don't even want they help because the wisdom that they're giving you was not in love but God says I, I love you and when I pour into you, amen, yes, I'm a God, amen, that, that is going to have to correct some things. I'm a God that I'm a righteous judge. I'm a jealous God. But when I send spiritual wisdom your way, even when you make mistakes, I still love you. Still love you. So on, on this morning, and the question is, Pastor, I have, I have, some, I have, some, I have some natural wisdom. I consider myself wise. I've made some wise choices. Yeah, I messed up sometimes, but I made, I pretty much, if I, if, I, if I balance it out, I made more wise decisions than bad decisions. But in the spiritual realm, amen, I, I need some spiritual wisdom. I know that I'm lacking uh, in this area. For whatever reason, I, I, I've just, I, I don't know what it is. So, Pastor, can you help me on this morning? What, what, what do I need to do? First and foremost, amen, you need to recognize, amen, that true wisdom is something that you need. That's first and foremost, amen. You, you go through any uh, type of uh, a program, amen, that is trying to assist you uh, with making your life better and trying to propel you to the next level. Uh, first, <laughs> before they can even help you, <laughs> amen, the first thing they, they tell you is that you're going to have to uh, make some confessions <laughs> and make some declarations and you're going to have to admit some things that you don't really feel like admitting because until you admit that you are, have a deficiency, how can anybody ever help you? First, you have to say, Lord, I, I need your help. Apostle uh, James, amen, in James uh, 1 and 5, he says, once you get there and you realize that, that you need more wisdom, he just makes it very clear. He says, if you lack wisdom, ask God who gives it to you liberally without reproach. If you look at that word ask, ask, amen, A-S-K, Amen. It's translated in the Greek. It, it, it simply means to ask with an inner desire, to have a craving for it. Amen. As I was thinking about that, I remember when we were growing up and it was, amen, there was a few kids in the house. Amen. And I know that we got on our parents' nerves because we asked more than we obeyed. Amen. Every time you turned around, we wanted something. And, and, and but, 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 but when you think about it, the analogy, amen, is that when you really want something bad, amen, that's all you're thinking about. If they said they was going to take us to McDonald's, amen, in the evening, we started asking in the morning. When are we going to McDonald's? It gets to the, what time are we leaving? And because we were focused, that, that was our craving, that was our inner desire. Some of us need to have a craving for the things of God, Amen. You, some of us need to get up in the morning and say, Lord, amen, I crave, amen, uh, uh, your, your, your ministry, Lord, I, I crave, amen, uh, worship, Lord, I crave uh, praise and, and, and prayer. And, you know, we get up and we have, uh, we fill our appetites with so many different things, amen, and we make sure that when we leave and we, we lay down at night that, that all of our natural, uh, 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 you know, expectations, we have met that craving. But some Sometimes we need to get up in the morning and say, Lord, let your will be done in my life. Lord, I want more of you, Lord. I, I want to get closer to you. And, and, and I guarantee you that when you affix your mind and your heart on what God wants, amen, all that other stuff, it falls in place. It falls in place. Proverbs 15 and 33 says, wisdom 
his instructions is to fear the Lord. And humility becomes before honor. Yet to receive spiritual wisdom, you must have a fear for the Lord. What is, what is that? It's a, a reverence. It's choosing to know him personally. Amen. By following Jesus Christ. On today as we, we close and on today as we conclude, um, I want you to revisit, amen, this in your quiet time. I, I want you to think about some of the decisions that you are making. Even now with all of this time that you have um, to yourself, amen, uh, not able to travel, amen, not really able to enjoy extracurricular activities, amen, being safe, spending more time at home, hopefully spending more time uh, with God. Wow, what an awesome opportunity uh, for you to uh, gain more spiritual wisdom, uh, to position yourself where you make uh, more wise choices as it relates to your spiritual life. Preachers and pastors and amen, leaders have, have been singing the same tune uh, since COVID has arrived, amen, as it relates to the church, amen, it will be a shame whenever we make it back in, amen, they're extending uh, uh, different regulations as we speak and, and churches are having to readjust uh, their scheduling for coming back in, but it will be a shame that when you come back and we're able to come back to fellowship as brothers and sisters in Christ, amen, that you come back the same way that you left. Mm. <laughs> you come back and we still got to pump and prime you to praise the Lord. <laughs> and we still got to worry about if you're going to be on time for church. Amen. We still have to, have to worry about if you're going to be here for, for, for Bible study and for Sunday school. We, we still have to worry about, amen, that when the spirit and the liberty is here, if you're going to be stubborn and not give in to the spirit, oh, it would be a shame. And so this is the time, a time of preparation while you're at your house, amen. You can practice worshiping, amen, or what you're going to be like, amen, when you get to the house of God. And you can run around your house and jump on your sofa. Praise the Lord. It's just your house is your insurance. Amen. Amen. Don't come here jumping on stuff. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, but you can have a praise party in your house. Amen. And you can, you can go into worship because the organist is not going to be in your house. Amen. The, 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 you know, the praise and worship leader is not going to be in your house. And so you won't have to worry about is it manufactured or if you just got hyped and, and, and you just got excited about, about what was going on. But in your, in your space, in your atmosphere, in, in your environment, when the Holy Spirit falls in your house, Ain't nobody else around and you can't stop saying thank you, Jesus. And you can't stop giving God the glory and your kids might be acting up, but you ain't even worried about it because the presence and the spirit and the anointing of the Holy Spirit is so overwhelming in your house. Then when you get to this house, <laughs> we won't have to worry about nothing. When you get to this house, amen, we, we, we won't have to say, will you praise the Lord and will you lift up your hands, amen. When you get out your car, amen, in the parking lot, before you even bust through these doors, there will be a spirit of praise and a spirit of worship on your tongue and in your heart. Mm -mm -mm. So I encourage you, use your time wisely. Use your time wisely. On well, today, as we close this message, as we go into prayer, amen, whoever you may be, wherever you may be, uh, God is still sitting high and he's still looking low. I know that people are still uh, struggling. I know that people are still uh, dealing with um, calamity and uh, catastrophe in their life and people are still losing loved ones but I want to remind you that everything that God does is good 
that everything he does is good, that he loves you and he cares about you. And so even in despite of what you're going through, uh, don't give up on God. This is what the song says, because he won't give up on you. Amen. I preached the message several weeks ago. He's still able. He's still willing uh, to be all that you need. For those that are not saved on today and might have caught this message, amen, just passing through and you stopped here, amen. God loves you and he wants to save you. Amen. He wants to save you. And so as we pray, amen, as we lift up our voice to God, we just ask that you pray with us, that you meditate on God and what you need him to do. Eternal Father, Lord, we say thank you. Father, we thank you uh, that you love and enjoy uh, giving generously. And wisdom is one of your essential characteristics that you, you give. God, we thank you for all of the knowledge that you allow us to uh, retain but, Lord, we know that uh, spiritual wisdom is necessary for us to do a spiritual work. So on today, God, we, we pray your blessings on everyone that is uh, here in this, this, this building, as well as those that are online. And, uh, God, we just say on today, God, every, whatever the need is, God, meet the need, whether the need is salvation. God, whether the need is healing. God, whether the need is, 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 is financial, God, you are a wake maker, God. Your word says that, God, that you can do exceedingly and abundantly more than we can ask or think. God, so send a blessing to their address. God, even now to their hospital rooms, God. God, wherever they may be, they might be at work, God. God, we haven't forgotten that, God, we've had a lot that's been going on in these last several weeks, God, and celebrating the life of George, of Floyd, and God, and those that lost their lives, God. We've had a lot of going on now, now COVID, God, 19 is spiking up, but Lord, we, we, we still trust in you. God, we still believe that, God, that you are in control. We believe that you are a sovereign a God, and so, God, we haven't lost faith in you. God, even now we cancel, uh, uh, God, the, the, the assignment of the enemy, God. We come against Satan uh, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. We bind confusion, God. We bind sickness. We bind the spirit of infirmity, God. We bind doubt, Lord. We bind fear in the name of Jesus, God. We cancel every assignment of the enemy. He will not be able to steal, amen, your finance. He, he will not be able to steal, God, your relationship. He will not be able to steal your joy, your worship. The devil is a lie and we plead the blood of Jesus against him right now. He's defeated and you are exalted. So on today, God, humbly, as we come before your throne of grace, Lord, we say thank you. God, not, not, not for, for, for what you've already done, God, but we thank you for what you're going to do. Mm, mm, mm. Ah, God, we thank you for the doors that you're going to open, the ways that you're going to make, God. And somebody cried out, if you don't do nothing, you've already done enough, Lord. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We thank you. So on today, we ask that you bless the people of God. God, bless this congregation. God, bless other pastors and their congregation. That God, that we don't get weary in well-doing. Because due season is on the way. It's on the way. And God, we want to be found rejoicing. God, we want to be found lifting our hands. God, we want to be found, uh, God, giving you the glory. Due season is on the way, God. So on today, God, we say thank you again. Now, for that person that is out of the ark of safety, God, and has not made the election, God, we just declare that on today that they will confess with their mouth and they will believe in their heart that you are God, that you are Lord. Lord, we declare that they will say, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me of my sins. 
God, and that they will turn, God, from the wayward life. And God, that they will put your, their trust in you. Uh, this is our prayer in the mighty, hallelujah, the strong, the powerful, the loving, compassionate, never-ending love of Jesus, we pray. And let everyone say amen, amen. and amen. God bless you. May God keep you. God is able to do Hallelujah. just what he said yes. he will do. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. He's able.